Hey, how's it going? This is Chris from Chocolate Chip, and for today's adventure, I'm currently. Hey, how's it going? It's Chris from Chocolate Chip, and for today's adventure, I'm currently working my way up the north. Hey, how's it going? This is Chris from Chocolate Chip, and for today's adventure. stupid. And for today's adventure, I'm currently working my way up the Northumberland coastal route. It's a beautiful day today and I'm going to be doing an overnight camp in Drew Ridge Bay. So I hope you enjoy. So I'm about 20 minutes, half an hour away from where I need to be for the camp. Uh, but there's a really cool little shortcut road coming up. Uh, it's off sort of limits to normal vehicles. But because I'm in the Nissan Navara truck, um, it should be absolutely fine. So we'll head down that way. It's a bit of a cool little track. We'll take the shortcut and uh, hopefully we'll be at the beach very, very shortly. This is amazing, absolutely amazing. Cool little road that I found and now back onto the main road, which is awesome. Okay, so I've arrived at the venue. Uh, basically, they've just told me to sort of set up camp uh, just basically right next to the sea dunes. So uh, I'm just heading round now and uh, we'll get the tent set up and uh, try and get a bit of a camp going on very, very soon. So I've just arrived and uh, basically I just need to get the uh, leveling blocks out of the back of the pickup to uh, to level the truck because it's slightly it's slightly leaning one way so I'm just gonna get these out. Oh come on. I'm trying to do everything I can not to set off the fire extinguisher. So guys, 
So guys, uh, I'm here at Drew Ridge Bay. Um, I've managed to get the truck on the levelers. Uh, the lovely people who own the uh, the land have sort of said I can sort of stay down here out the way. So I'm going to get things set up. I'm going to get the tent and awning up now, uh, get the ladder on, uh, get my bedding in there. Uh, so I'll probably be back with you, I guess, in a few minutes. So, I mean, as you can see, that's pretty quick. Um, I think I've had the whole thing up, maybe in sort of like less than less than five minutes for sure. Um, as you can see, the tent goes up really easy. Uh, the awning, like I said, I've said in my awning review, if you've 
If you've not seen my tent box awning review, you should definitely check it out, um, as well as the cargo tent review video. Um, but I said in my um, in my review video of the awning that it's a little bit fiddly. There's a knack to putting it up on your own, um, which that basically was. Yeah, it's in shot. I was just checking it was in shot. Yeah, um, so that's kind of how you put it on your, up on your own. You've got to kind of fold it out, get the, get the horizontal bars out, then you've got to fold it back, sort of take off, your, open up your vertical bars, and then sort of attach the horizontal bars. It seems to be the easiest way to do it. If somebody else has an easier way, please show me. But uh, yeah, it's, like I said, it's a bit of an act to it. You get it after about the third, fourth time of doing it, uh, and then it can go up pretty easy. And obviously it's not too windy today, so, um, so it's it's not been too difficult, but I've seen people trying to do it online and it's blowing a gale and yeah, there's awnings everywhere. So yeah, it's not too bad. What I'm gonna do, just for a bit of extra security, I'm just gonna attach the, the guy ropes and the pegs. Um, just get them on, because I am by the sea and there's a bit of a breeze and although the wind forecast was very minimal wind tonight, uh, it's just always be a better safe than sorry. So I'm gonna put the guy ropes on and then uh, I'll start unpacking everything else. I must apologize for my terrible knot tying skills. I've not mastered that at all yet. Um, so I'm going with the double, double, well, it's either the loop and swoop or the double knots, but uh, I've done a few camps so far and it seems to be holding up, but I, uh, I definitely need to practice my knots a lot more um, because I've definitely not yet mastered it as it stands. I'm just going to turn the camera and you can see what I'm doing a little bit more. Um, so the tent box awning comes with two guy ropes uh, and the holes are at the front. Again, check out my tent box awning review video uh, where I kind of, I cover sort of how that's set up, but you should, again, excuse my absolutely terrible knot tying skills. Um, like I say, I did go to Cubs when I was younger, but uh, I've just completely forgot everything that I uh, that I learned then. Uh, I don't know what that is, so we'll, there's quite a few hands of uh, just make sure these are extra tight and secure. Yeah, that looks pretty good. That looks good. I'm happy with that. Now, the main thing I wanted to mention, it's not, expect, I'm not, it's not expected to rain tonight. It's, uh, it's blue skies over there and slightly cloudy over there, but there's no rain forecast. Um, if the rain was to sort of be forecast or whether it looked like it was going to rain later on tonight, I would generally drop one side of the awning to let the rain water fall off. That's what you're meant to do. Uh, so far, we've been able to camp with pretty good weather, so we've not had to worry about it. But I'll keep an eye on the weather forecast later and uh, I can't imagine it changing. I mean, if I spin it round and look over there, it's, uh, it's blue skies and clouds. So I can't really, I can't really imagine that it will, uh, it will change that much. But uh, yeah, we'll see, we'll see. Um, so yeah, on in tent set up. I'm gonna get the bedding in, get that sorted and then I'll start unpacking everything else and uh, I think the plan is uh, we'll get a bit of a fire going, um, we'll get some tea on afterwards, I've got uh, some steak, some potatoes, so I'm going to fire roast my potatoes, uh, I'm going to do a steak with some garlic and some butter, and I've got some veg as well, and then I've got some rice pudding for dessert, so uh, yeah. So I think the plan now, I'll get the bedding in, uh, get a bit of a camp set up here, get, some, get, get my chair and table out of my hammock, uh, we'll have a bit of a chill. Um, and then we're gonna get some tea on as well. Um, so I've got uh, some something nice to make for tea tonight. So I'll do, I'll do that as well. 
and then uh, I'll also show another cool little product that I've got as well which is uh, which someone sent me and it's it's awesome it's really really good uh, so yeah I'll get I'll get unpacked and uh, again I'll come back in a few more minutes So, this thing guys, um, is basically called a tyre table and essentially you'll see in a moment it attaches to the car wheel, uh, stores really flat but makes a really really sturdy table so I'm going to set up uh, the, cooker, the cooking station on there tonight um, but yeah really really cool product and I'm going to do a separate review so there will be a separate re review video of this on our YouTube channel for you to take a look at really good little product, uh, about £130 so a nice, uh, it stores away flat, which is another good thing, obviously, about many things about camping is that storage is key. So it stores really flat, doesn't take up much room, but uh, a really good, strong, sturdy table. So we're going to set that up now. And uh, like I said, if you're interested in this, I'll put the link up so you can watch the review video of the tire table. So guys, basically what this does, uh, it hooks over the car wheel. So I've got to just get it in a position where I can put it on and then whoa, I'll get it set up a bit further, try and not destroy my car. So let's put that on there. So that feels pretty good. Um, there's also a, a little arm that sort of a support arm here. Uh, so to help you get the table level. Um, there we go. And I'll, I'll level that out now. It's a little bit loose, so I need to just uh, I need to loosen up these tightening knobs underneath, uh, and then I should be able to push the back in. There we go. And if I put a bit of pressure on it and tighten it up, it should be a lot more secure. Yeah. So. The tire table is really cool, uh, like I say, um, I'll talk about it a lot more in my review video, but essentially you don't, you, you can't put much weight on it, it's not for stepping on, it's not for sitting on, but it's a good, solid, sturdy product, and I've actually just noticed that it's actually slightly wonky, which isn't good, but I'll straighten it up now, but uh, yeah, very good sturdy product, I'll, I'll put the cooking station on there later and show you, uh, and, and show you that, but yeah, really good product, so check out the review video for sure. Another cool thing I bought, guys, was this. It's uh, just about £30 off Amazon. And essentially, it just uh, it tightens up in the back of the truck. So it, it's like a ratchet bar. It extends out, tightens it. You sort of push it into place. And it stops all your things from sliding around in the back of the truck. And obviously, if you don't have a pickup truck, you may not necessarily need this. But if you've got a van or anything like that, really good, uh, really good little product. So what I'm going to do guys is I've just come around this side for the moment actually before I set the bedding up and I've got this privacy tent um, which I'm going to use as the toilet tent tonight. So I'm not showering just because I'm only away for one night. Um, so but I'll set this up now and then at least that's done and I don't need to worry about it.
So I've just got to peg this into place. Um, also try to get in the habit of storing my bags and things close by just because I'm not necessarily forgetful, but when you've got a lot of things, it's more that I don't want to forget something when I leave. So I just, all the pegs come with storage bags and I'm just trying to make sure that I, uh, I put the storage bags uh, somewhere safe. So guys, um, there's the privacy tent. Uh, there's a few different options for privacy tents. I am gonna do a review of this one because uh, there's nothing really about it online. But um, obviously a few people get the little pop-up privacy tents. Um, we just wanted something that attached to the vehicle, hence why we bought this sort of uh, pop-out privacy tent from Direct 4x4. Um, it's just, it's more convenient for us to have it store stored on the side of the truck uh, than sort of shoved it's another thing to shove in the back of the pickup and take with you. It's another thing to forget. Um, so we set this up. I've got the porta potty toilet and uh, we'll put that in there just for later. Um, but yeah, it's a really cool, really cool, really cool little product. So guys, uh, next thing I want to do is just try and get this windbreaker set up. Um, I've literally just got this today. So um, the, last, the last few times we've got a camp, um, we've just found that we, Kind of felt like we needed one and uh, at the minute because we're still in the COVID-19 epidemic it seems that windbreakers are up there with flour and toilet roll and I couldn't get one anywhere so uh, I had to sort of drive quite far today to pick one up uh, but I managed to get one but I just thought it's going to make my life a bit easier when it comes to cooking and whatnot so I thought it was a a worthwhile investment um, so yeah so this is brand new today I thought I'd get a decent one I was trying to get one that didn't look like it had uh, been picked up from the range or Asda or something like that you know just like one with sunshine on it and things like that I wanted something that was gonna be pretty good so I went for this one it's a Berghaus uh, Berghaus one whether it's good or not we shall see but uh, like I say, it's, it's pretty straightforward to put together. Um, just comes with these poles uh, slotting into these sort of sleeves here, and uh, we should be up and running, hopefully, very shortly. And it's just gonna make things a lot easier to cook. Like I said, last time we went on a camp, it was, uh, wasn't even that windy, but it really was a struggle, sort of, when we made bacon butties in the morning, and you know, trying to cook tea at night, everything just took longer. Um, so we thought if we get the the windbreak, it should make things a little bit easier. So yeah, I'll get this set up, give us a bit of a shelter, and then and then we'll see where we're at after that. So the uh, wind breaks up. What a faff on. Um, I love how simple the tent is, the tent box to go up, and I love how the awning went up really quickly, but that windbreak was an absolute faff on. Uh, probably be a lot easier with two people, maybe. Uh, but uh, yeah, it's up, it's done. It'll give me that sort of wind cover I need when I'm making tea, and obviously having a bit of a chill later. Uh, but yeah, I mean, it looks good. I'm happy with the way it looks. Um, let's just see how it holds up. Fingers crossed it, it does the trick. So before I actually sort of set up any more, I need to just go over and get some water uh, the fresh water is just over here um, but I don't really I mean there's no one around but there's a few walkers and not that anyone's not trustworthy but I just thought I don't want to get everything out and then sort of have to leave the tent uh, I'm still a little bit conscious because the gear is quite new about leaving it um, and I've also I have a lock that I put around the ladder to stop anyone taking the ladder in the middle of the night the locks in the car so is the key but the key's not in the lock, so uh, I need to dig out the back of the pickup bed and uh, pull everything out and try and find the little key, so I can uh, so I can uh, lock the ladder to the car 
but uh, I'll do that. I'll get the water now, and then I'll uh, I'll come. Sh I'll still head back over. So yeah, so this this water storage bag is pretty cool. Um, not that I've necessarily skipped out because I've bought the, we bought the tent box and quite a few other things quite recently, but uh, I'd save money somewhere. So we uh, I picked this bad boy up from uh, I think it was like being no the range got it from the range two ninety nine. Uh, I expected it to be disastrous. It's the first time we've used it, uh, so we'll just see if it holds up. But uh, that should be enough water to do me for washing up and uh, kettle and things like that later. Uh, but I've got separate drinking water somewhere. But uh, yeah, so far so good. It's not leaked. So yeah, I'm very, very happy. So guys, uh, we're all set up, um, obviously with the windbreaker. Um, I need to keep watching my head for these guy ropes. Uh, I've got some logs for the fire. We'll get that going. Sort of, what time is it now? Quarter to seven, so sunset's gonna be probably in about two hours, so um, we'll get cooking, we'll do that. We'll get cooking first, um, we'll get that out, and then we'll get the fire, the fire going at the same time. I need to find the key to lock the ladder to the, uh, to the car. So I'll do that shortly as well. And I need to sort the, the toilet liquid out for the porta potty as well. Uh, because I'm stopping on someone's land, I don't really want to be digging a hole. So I've brought the port brought the porta potty. Uh, so I'll, I'll, short, I'll sort that shortly. But yeah, we'll get the stove out first. We'll do that, get, get that hooked up. And then we'll figure out what to do next after that. So, I don't know if you can see this down here, guys. Let's have a look, let me spin this round. Bit of a tilt. There we go, that's coming through, okay. So, uh, so I'm using the, uh, I think this is called the Karak, Karak, Karak 2 Cup. Um, yeah, I did quite a bit of research. Uh, before I committed to buying a gas cooker. Uh, we've also got the option of cooking over the fire as well, but uh, I, wanted a I, wa I wanted a gas cooker. Um, I, I just, I, I felt it was gonna be better for us, obviously making brews and there's some places where you can't always set up a fire. So um, yeah, so we've got this. I need to figure out, there we go. Yeah, it's a bit stable now. Yeah, so it's got the two ring burner. Uh, it's got the, the griddle plates, which I'm gonna actually swap over now. So these are fresh from being used last time. Give them a bit of a clean. Don't know that is. Uh, I need. There's a little metal spanner that I need to. Uh, attach the gas regulator. Here we go. So I need that. That's important. Uh, don't lose that. And I'll get the, uh, the gas canister right now, get that hooked up. And then, uh, yeah, steak for tea. That's the plan. So hopefully it goes to plan as well. Uh, I don't see any reason why it shouldn't, but uh, these things don't, don't always pan out the way I want. So So I'm using camping gas, uh, you can get Calor, probably some other brands as well. Uh, the reason I went for the camping gas was simply just because I was buying a lot of things from Go, Go Outdoors at the time and it seemed like the, uh, the easiest option. Um, plus we were meant to be doing a trip down into Europe this summer, but obviously with the, uh, the COVID-19 that's been cancelled, uh, but the gentleman that I spoke to said that uh, that I said camping gas was a little bit easier accessible in Europe if you needed to exchange your canisters uh, I don't know he could have been lying I'm not too sure but uh, he seemed nice enough so let's just say we believe him for now um, 
so yeah so we went with the camping gas the guy also recommended going for the 907 um, bottle he said it was the biggest bottle but also quite light and small which is again I've said it a few times but good for good for camping if things are small so and then for this I uh, I purchased the quick release clip so there we go that's it done I want to make sure I put these back where they're meant to be in a safe place so these are just the little bits and things like that the spanner the little caps I, uh, the guy also said it go outdoors not to lose this thing from the camping gas canister because they're a tenner a pop whether he's again whether he's telling the truth or not, I'm not sure but I will keep hold of it and then these are just the little uh, the little caps I don't like losing things like that uh, I think I've probably got a little bit of OCD about them kind of things so uh, yeah we'll chuck them in there and then at least they're safe and sound so yeah so that's the stove set up um, and I think now I'll see what else I can get out of the truck okay the good news is I can't feel the wind which is awesome um, I'm gonna just set up the the sleeping gear up in the tent um, these are really cool. We picked these up from Aldi, of all places. Uh, Aldi's great for a special buys. As anyone knows, generally you avoid the center aisles at Aldi and Lidl just because you go in to buy milk and bread and you come out with fishing gears, chainsaws, camping gear, blankets, motorcycle equipment, everything but what, everything but what you went in for. But no, it's, in all seriousness, the stuff from Aldi and Lidl is really, really good. Obviously, it's a little bit hit or miss, but generally speaking, it's pretty good so we've got these blankets literally like seven or eight quid from uh, Aldi and what I found is that actually by laying one of these on top of the mattress uh, makes a bit of a difference when it's a warmth in the night and um, I've also under the mattress put a anti-condensation mat that I managed to get off Amazon and um, so that was about 40 50 quid so I've put that underneath just to stop the moisture building up and the mold uh, for the condensation but these are really good on top of the mattress just a nice blanket uh, I've also got another one just for down here later and then I've got my beast pod sleeping bag uh, I don't do mummy sleeping bags the I, I feel too confined so this beast one is uh, it's just the ticket it's plenty of room plenty of space and uh, sort of exactly what I need so I'm gonna just tighten this guys because the wind's sort of coming in Let's have a look. Right, so I'm going to put these up in the tent and I'll be back down in a second. So, as you can see, it's plenty cosy inside the tent box tent. Uh, this being the cargo specifically, I'm sure the rest of them are. But uh, yeah, it's very cosy, uh, very nice. And uh, we sort of camped in a, a thunderstorm the other week and it was still absolutely fine. Uh, woke up in the morning nice and snug. But yeah, a good sleeping bag, a good quality tent seems to do, seems to do the trick. Um, yeah, very, very good, very happy. So, which idiot forgot his pillars? me. I was leaving the house before and my wife she has said have you got everything? I was like I'm pretty sure I have you know I checked through my list and stuff and then I was just putting the bedding up there and realized I've left my pillows at home. So I'm gonna probably just use this as a pillow for tonight. Uh, it'll do the trick absolutely fine. Um, I'm glad I brought it actually because I was only gonna bring one blanket so I'm glad I brought two but uh, yeah it'll be fine. I just had a momentary lapse that was all it was. So guys, uh, what I want to do now is I've got an electric cooler in the back of the truck uh, that's, that was running to keep all my meat and everything cold while I was driving but I appreciate it's probably been about an hour and a half now maybe it's been sat there. I don't really want to leave it any longer uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to get the cooler out and plug it into my tent box power station. Um, I've got a solar panel kit as well from tent box so what I'm going to do is set all that up and then I can uh, run the cooler while it's still charging. I've got about an hour and a half an hour and 45 minutes worth of sun left so uh, I'll set all that up set the whole kit up and then I can run my cooler while before I'm cooking I also need to charge my Insta360 battery as well 
I've just drained the battery. So I'm gonna do that now. And then uh, I think it'll be time for some food after that. So yeah, we'll, 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 we'll do that now. So, just put this plug away. So, just gonna tidy that up. Uh, I'll get the solar panel kit. I've lost my solar panel kit, that's not good. Uh... Well, my solar panel kit is somewhere because I've seen it. So I need to dig that out. I'm just going to set this table up. And this will be my dining table. And then I can. Uh, just use this and set things up on it and obviously use it for eating in a little while. Uh, again, this is a really cool little table. I picked it up, off, it was off Amazon. Uh, I wanna say about 30 quid, maybe, maybe 25, maybe 40, I can't remember off the top of my head. But uh, cool little table, folds up really small and uh, it's nice and sturdy when it's set up actually, surprisingly, which uh, which is good because obviously when you've got plates on there and things you don't want it to be to be wobbly um, so oh, it's a bit of a bit of a knack to setting it up there we go USB in and I need my 12 volt adapter put that in the output and there we go so the tech box power station is running uh, let me find the solar panel kit because that's important Here we go. It was under my, uh, it was under the bag for the cooker. So I'll get this set up now. So let's get this out. So I've been pointing towards the sun because that's a solar panel kit at the end of the day. It needs the sun to power it. So let me move it over here a little. Uh, oh, there's a bit of damp and condensation on there. I probably should have aired it out last time uh, when I got back from my last trip, uh, my last overnight stay, my last trip, but uh, I'll give it a bit of a wipe down, I've got a cloth, um, just need to go in here and get the cable, so probably need to put this power station kit down here, but it'll be fine down there, I'm sure I'm So I'll just put the 10 box power station behind the solar panel. I need to plug the solar panel in and also find the hole in the back. Now, obviously if you're watching this and you've not seen my, uh, there it's charging. Uh, if you're watching this and you've not yet seen my review, um, which I'm gonna, which now, if you're watching this, I am gonna do a review video of the tent box solar panel and the tent box power station kit. So yeah, it's definitely worth the watch. I'll 
probably by the time this video is live, this the review will be live. So I'll uh, I'll put a link to it in the in the video above. But uh, I've had this for a few days now, and it's a really really cool little bit of kit. Uh, the thing to bear in mind is that when you're running something like a cooler, the cooler even this the station, it will let you charge the power station while the cooler's running if you're using this cigarette lighter. So if you've got a cooler like this one, which has a, a three pin plug as well, it won't let you charge and use the three pin plug at the same time, but it will let you charge and use the DC sort of output. Um, now at the minute I'm charging the, these Insta360 batteries, or just one battery, sorry, and I'm running the cooler, but the cooler will drain power quicker than this can charge. So just bear that in mind uh, when you're running something powerful like a cooler. I've got this running on economy mode, but still, it uh, it does uh, it does drain with something like this quicker than it will charge. So just bear that in mind. So I've just got these as well. So this is my little chair. It goes into a tiny little bag like this. Unfolds, not dissimilar from the table, and everything just kind of snaps into position almost like traditional tent pegs do. Uh, I think. It's about 20, 25 quid maybe off Amazon. Uh, there is a bit of a knack to them because you've, uh, hang on a minute. There we go, that looks better. Uh, yeah, there's a bit of a knack to them because uh, for a big guy like me, I mean, I'm 6'3". And uh, you've got to sort of practice like sitting in them, but they do the job. They're actually really good once you get once you get used. I mean, I know it sounds crazy sitting down. We're, we've sat I've sat down for 35 years, but uh, the chair these chairs swing a little bit, so you just need to you don't want to lean too far back. Is basically what I'm trying to say. Where you're just going to go ass overhead. So, but yeah, so goes together nicely. You've got room in the side pockets here for like a phone, obviously a drink, that's what you want and yeah, nice and chill, which is good. So yeah, so a nice cool little seat there. Um, I'll sit on that when I'm having my tea. So I've got my little fire pit set up here guys. I'm gonna set this up probably just here. I'll get that going now. Uh, let's grab my little action cam. So, I'll get this going. So, I've got my kindling, I've got my fire lighters, and I've got these coffee logs. Um, fuel recycled from coffee grounds. So, we're gonna try that and uh, see what that's like. Uh, we sort of, we give it a test run the other night for a little bit and it worked really, really well. So, I'm gonna give this fire a go, getting it started. And the mistake the mistake we made the first time that we ever went camping was we uh, didn't take enough wood so ever since then we've uh, we've made sure we've always had lots of kindling with us just to make sure we can get the fire going uh, saying that I mean it took eventually uh, the first time around but uh, yeah it just uh, looked like it was gonna go out a few times so we made sure from then on we had enough stuff uh, just trying to get this balance, guys. Bear with me. There we go. I'm sure there's probably some people on here who are a lot more proficient in lighting a fire than I am. Uh, some people will be looking at this and thinking how rubbish it looks, but uh, as long as I can get my potatoes on the fire, then. Uh, that's the main thing, so that looks pretty good. Let's, uh, let's see if we can get it lit. Should have probably set this up where I 
it wasn't in the wind. Oh, is that one? Seems to have done the trick. I'm not going to get cocky too quickly, but uh, we have smoke, so that could be a good start. We'll see. But uh, yeah, I'm going to keep them there. So we'll leave that just to go for a minute. I mentioned a little earlier that I uh, had a lock which went round the roof bars of the truck and then round my ladder so no one walked off with the ladder in the middle of the night. I found the key, so I, I knew it was in the back of the truck but it clearly had fallen out of the lock. It's just a cycle lock but uh, it's strong and it does the trick. So um, I'm going to attach that onto the truck now. I'll let that keep going. I'll be back in a minute. So this is my... Oh, hang on move this bag out of the way. So this is the uh, cycle lock in question. Uh, like I said, just, it's a good quality cycle lock. I mean, it's not gonna deter a determined, I mean, a determined thief is gonna take a, take your ladder regardless, but the average chancer walking by in the middle of the night and just trying to lift off with the, uh, lift off with the ladder uh, just means that's securely round there now so it can't go anywhere, obviously. There's other things they can take, but the ladder's gonna be more of a pain in the backside thing. I mean, you can get replacements, but obviously he just, just saves another faff on, doesn't it? So, fire's going quite well. Kindling seems to be taken. Uh, I've got some sort of chunkier kindling logs here that I'll put on shortly and then I'll break open the coffee ones. Surprisingly, the coffee logs actually take really, really well. Uh, it's a nice idea as well. I mean, you know, recycling anyway is always a good thing, but yeah, fuel from recycled coffee logs, it says. And uh, Shazzy and my wife, she, she loves coffee. So she said they just smelt really nice last time as well, which was, another added bonus. So yeah, cool little thing. Um, I'm gonna let this go and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna prep tea and then um, I'm gonna get the, the grill on and I'll get my steak cooking. Uh, obviously I need to let this go a little bit to get my potatoes going in the fire. Um, so what I'm probably actually gonna do is I'm gonna prep my tea. I'll let this go once this has got a hot bed of uh, coals. I'll uh, get my potatoes, put them in and then uh, they're gonna need about 20 minutes on the fire. And um, my steak obviously wants the, the plate top won't take too long so um, yeah, I'll actually do that last, and I've got some asparagus tips and things like that. I'm going to cook everything in garlic butter. Should be really nice. Should be nice. So, guys, uh, this is my bag of tricks that I brought up with me today. So I'm going to have rice pudding later. That's the plan anyway. Hopefully I'm not too full for my steak. I got the world's biggest bottle of tom tomato ketchup. Probably not the world's biggest, but it's a decent size. Um, we've been sort of previously taking things from the house and putting them in and then moving them back to the house, and I thought, you know what it is? There's bound to forget something eventually, so I thought I'll just get a big bottle of Tommy sauce, I'll leave it with the camping gear, and it should do us for quite a few camping trips. Saying that, Shazia loves tomato ketchup, so if she gets her hands on it, then uh, I can't imagine it lasting too long. But yeah, um, just got a Satsuma tin opener for my rice pudding. And I've got my knife and my washing up liquid. These are all things that I forgot last time, so and I've just got ibuprofen in case I get a headache. But uh, yeah, I forgot washing up liquid last time. So when we cooked, we had no water, we had no washing up liquid. And uh, yeah, it was a bit of a disaster. So I thought I'll get the washing up liquid. But saying that, I forgot the scourer or something to scrub the grill, griddle plates with once I've done my steak. So I still forgot something. I knew I would, I knew I would. Next time, I would definitely have a scrubbing brush to use with this. But if I get it early enough and don't let it dry, it should be fine. When I was in Go Outdoors today, I thought I'll pick up some bigger plastic 
camping plates. So they're gonna do just the job, I hope. So I'm gonna put them just in here. I also got this little gadget today as well. So this is a compact barbecue six in one tool. Oh, let me get this in there. So yeah, six in one tool. Uh, what have we got going on here? Um, it's a spoon, it's a knife, it's a spatula, it's a fork, it's a brush, it's a corkscrew, and it's a bottle opener as well. So it's kind of like a Swiss Army knife, I guess. But uh, for the kitchen utensil world, which is awesome. So uh, I'm gonna chuck this box in there. So yeah, so we've got a spatula, fork, spoon. This is really cool. A uh, brush and a knife. Uh, if I put that down, let's get the knife out. Everything opens really nice as well, which is good. I think it was about seven quid or something, but uh, yeah, this will do the trick. Really good, really cool little tool. I'm happy with that. Uh, and obviously it comes with a nice little storage bag as well. Yeah, good job from Go Outdoors, I'm impressed. So, um, I need to go on top of the fire and then uh, Get some more wood on there. I'm saving my Copperberg. I didn't realize it was in there and I'm not a massive drinker normally, but it's a nice night and uh, I think it'd be quite nice to sit there and have a steak on my Copperberg. Um, I probably would have got more if I'd actually thought about it, but you know, when you find it, like, unless I find a tenner in your pocket, it's the small things that matter and it's a nice little surprise as well. So yeah, I'm, gonna, I'm, I'm holding off actually having my Copperberg. Uh, I'm gonna just, I'm gonna stick it in the cooler just to cool it down a little bit and uh, yeah, hopefully it won't be too much longer for this fire and then um, we can get some food on. Uh, we've got a bit of a cold bed going now, so what I'm gonna do, where's my knife? I need to get more organized with this. I'm gonna cut into the top of this log bag, try and not take my finger out at the same time. I'm gonna get in here. Oh, come on, there we go. And let's stick a couple of these coffee logs on. Uh, put that down there. Need a bit of a kindling stick just to move all this around. So I put one coffee log on, two coffee logs. That's probably not the best way of doing it. Let me just move this. There we go, okay. Coffee logs are on. So hopefully that'll, they'll take, that'll start burning. And uh, yeah, I should be able to get the taters in the fire very, very shortly. I'll just move that out of the way. Hopefully I've not messed this up. There we go. So I think I'm not far off. I've just put some more kindling on, get a bit more of a cold bed going, and then I'm not far off. I'll get the coffee logs on, and then um, I'm just trying to think what else I need to do. I kind of, I'm a bit all all thumbs at the moment. Um, I might get the drone set up, just so I don't need to faff on doing that later, and then I can tech that up, just hopefully get a nice sort of shot of the, the camp and the sunset, because um, the sun is sort of a golden hour now, so I might do that now while I've got sort of five minutes or so. Um, and then I'm just, I'm hungry now. I wasn't hungry before and now I'm starving. So yeah, uh, soon as I can get, as soon as that fire, fire is ready to put the potatoes on, we'll, we'll do that. So yeah, I'll get the drone set up and then I'll come back and uh, hopefully that fire will be a bit more along.
So what I'm going to do now guys, basically, I'm just going to prep some potatoes for the fire. Um, I've just started cutting some up already. Um, what I want to do is, I want to cut them up just so they're a bit smaller. Hopefully they'll cook a little bit better, or a bit easier should I say. Uh, yeah, I think. Should be able to squeeze one more in there, I think. I think we're down there. Let's see if we can find a little one. Is there another one left? Yeah, that'll do. So, put that in there. And then, I've got some very, very lazy garlic paste. So, put that in there. Mix that around. And then, uh, I'll get some butter on there as well. And that should do just the trick. So there's the lazy garlic. Now I need the butter. Might as well use this thing since I got it. Uh, I need the knife. Okay, so. So I went for a lower pack spreadable butter just because I figured it'd be considerably easier than somehow managing to stop a normal pack of butter from melting. Um, obviously, at least with the lower pack spreadable, it's in the plastic container. Um, considering my cooler, as good as it is, it will run out of power eventually. Um, and also, I don't want to drain my power station because I need to charge my phone a little bit later. But, um, yeah, that tastes good. So, yeah, man. There we go. Okay, so. These are my potatoes. So, guys, uh, the fire's looking good. The coffee logs have taken, which is a good start. So, yeah. So, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to pop these potatoes in here. Jazzy's probably gonna tell me that it's wrong, but, well, the only way I'm gonna learn is by doing it. So, fingers crossed. So, I'm gonna set a timer for about 20 minutes. Um, hopefully that'll, uh, the fire won't burn out by then, God forbid. Um, but yeah, I'll set a timer for 20 minutes and uh, I can always see it, they're smoking. <clears throat> The fire did start taking, and then I've just put these potatoes on, and it kind of ground a bit of a halt again. So I'm just gonna put these on at a bit of an angle, just let the fire, let the air flow underneath. Just pop a couple of little bits of kindling underneath, just to just to give it a bit of a kick. And that should do the trick. So, next thing on the list is to get the Kadak stove going, so I'll give it a bit of a, oh, straight on, there we go. And I'll probably, yeah, I'll do this side as well. Now they're definitely going a lot better than they were the other day without the windbreaker, so the windbreaker is definitely making a difference. Uh, but yeah, we'll let the, these plates get hot and then I'll get the steak on there. And the potatoes are doing really, really well. And they're still a little bit hard. So uh, I'm gonna give them a bit more time in the fire, but I can hear them crackling over there. I can hear the, the garlic butter and everything uh, sort of cooking away. So we'll, uh, we'll get the steak done and hopefully it won't be too much longer. So 
So here's what we're going on guys. Uh, I've got Tesco's finest fillet steak. Uh, I've got the butter and the garlic again, and I've got some asparagus tips. So I'm gonna do the asparagus tips on the grill. Um, so I'm gonna just prep this steak now, and then we can get that on. And uh, I can't wait for tea. I mean, I've had steak and potatoes so many times, but there's something about cooking sort of out of the way and I can see the sunset and um, yeah I'm really looking forward to this tea and just sitting there with my copper burger enjoying my steak and my potatoes should be really nice so yeah so uh, I'm gonna prep this steak and then we'll get it on the grill shortly so guys uh, potatoes are almost ready so I'm gonna get my steak on and I'm gonna get my squeezy garlic on top I've also got these asparagus tips as well, so I want to get a little bit of butter on this one. I can tell that this isn't level just because the butter is flowing one way and it's heading that direction. So what I need to do is sort of get this butter over here with my asparagus tips um, and try and avoid it going down there. I've got the spray, I've got the fry light spray, but I really want to try and obviously avoid Ah, f*** it. There we go. It's fine. Get that on there. Now what I'm going to do, I'm kind of doing a bit of this back to front because I'm sort of rushing. I'm just going to do a bit of butter on there. A uh, little bit of lazy garlic. Right. Yeah, a little bit of lazy garlic on that. My asparagus tips. That's the problem because the tape, because the tire table, I've not set it up correctly, and uh, you can tell. Probably what I need to do is check its level again next time I do it. But uh, the butter, the actual butter is all flowing that way, and the problem is, is that uh, the real butter is not actually cooking the asparagus so like I say I'll use the fry light this time but don't judge me don't judge me at all So these, this camping gas stove is working a hell of a lot better with the windbreaker. Because there's a definite breeze tonight, but uh, just like there was last time we camped, but um, I should turn this down a little bit. Yeah, there's a definite breeze tonight, just like there was last time, but um, I can tell the difference. Absolutely tell the difference. That steak's probably actually a little bit too well done on that side. I'm. Uh, Trying to go for sort of like a medium, medium well. Uh, still a little bit pink on the outside. 
but uh, probably just give it another. So a minute on there, I'll flip it over. I'm just gonna go and check on these titties on the fire down there. So I'll run and check on them and then I'll be back to uh, just check on the steak again. I'll be two seconds. I can hear the potatoes rustling from here. I'm actually just gonna take them off the fire a little bit and just check in on them. I don't want them to be too black. Oh, look at that. Beautiful. Make sure everything's cooking in that butter. Uh, the potatoes are still a little bit hard, so I'm just going to let them go a little bit more. Obviously they're browning on one side. Whee. Yeah, let's get that covered up. I'll get the tin on top again. And uh, we'll let them go for a little bit longer. Okay, so that, they're not far off. I'll probably pull them off last. That's looking nice and well on that side. I don't want to speak too soon, but I may have actually timed this quite well. Um, we'll see. Um, There'll probably be chefs watching this crying like, no, what are you doing to that steak? I apologize. Uh, I'm starving. So uh, I'm cooking this as well as I think. Yeah, that's looking about right. Right, we'll turn that off because that's done. And then these are pretty much ready. So. All right, get these potatoes sorted and uh, we should be ready to eat. It'll be good. So yeah, oh, smells so nice as well. I'm looking forward to it. I'll be back in a minute. I've got my potatoes back. Uh, some of them are a little bit hard, but uh, they're pretty much there. So I'm gonna start plating up. Like I said, I can feel some of these potatoes are a little bit tougher. Uh, worst case scenario, I'll do what every British person does and cover them in tomato ketchup and pray for the best. So uh, <laughs> we'll see, but they they look good. Um, obviously you've got your burnt bits and that, but considering they've been on the fire, they don't look too bad. So yeah, how about that? You know what it is? I'm really happy with that. Is that even showing? Let's have a look. Let's focus, 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 focus. So, that's it. I'm going to get my can of Copperberg and I've got this to try as well. So this is Marmite hummus. Now, I've no idea if it's nice or not. I saw it in Tesco's and I thought I'll give it a go. It's gonna go one way or the other, isn't it? We're being Marmite. So yeah, I'll keep you posted on that. But yeah, so we've got, we've got garlic butter steak, garlic butter roasted new potatoes, uh, roasted asparagus tips, some Marmite hummus and yeah, that looks amazing. It looks really, really good. And as someone who likes his food, uh, I don't know, jury's out on that. We'll see. But yeah, so I was saying, as someone who likes their food, um, I'm really looking forward to this. And I've got my knife and fork, courtesy of Go Outdoors. So I'm gonna tuck in and we'll see how this is.
my fire is well and truly gone. No claim to be a fire expert. Definitely not going to be a claim to be a fire expert now. How now on YouTube? Failing miserably. But what I didn't fail at was this tea because it's amazing. Uh, the steak's good. The potatoes are good. I thought they'd be hard in places, but they're not. They're still nice and soft. Just perfect. And even though I forgot to chill the copperberg properly, it's still been in the cooler for about half an hour, so it's uh, it's still pretty good. Still nice and cold. Um, so yeah, so I'm going to walk through this while at the same time taking my time but I do want to get through it and I've got some rice pudding for dessert so and I think I'll still have that because I was a bit worried that it might get a bit like be a bit warm tonight but actually it's not too bad and I don't really didn't want to eat what, like rice, warm rice pudding on a warm night but uh, it's obviously it's getting a bit cooler now and um, yeah I still think I'm going to have the rice pudding so yeah so I'm going to crack on I'm going to eat this I don't know, I, I've tried lighting the fire, it just seems to keep going out, whether it's the wind or what, I'm not too sure, but uh, yeah, I think I'm about ready to give up on that, but um, I'm not roasting any marshmallows tonight or anything, so it's okay. But at the same time, I'm thinking, it would be nice to sit by the fire and keep warm. Yeah, let me eat this, I'll figure it out. So guys, we're on about 10 to 9 now. I think my solar panel's going to give up any, any second. Uh, the sun's sort of down behind the horizon. Um, I'm still eating my tea. Um, the Marmite hummus is amazing. Very happy I got that. Um, still really happy with my potatoes and my steak. Uh, all good. I did actually, I brought some sriracha mayonnaise with me and I didn't actually use any, so I might pop a little bit on there just for, for the crack. Uh, obviously tomato sauce with anything works, but uh, at the same time I really tried to not Dip my steak in tomato sauce because it kind of defeats the purpose. Um, but yeah, all really good. Um, so I'm really happy I brought the wind, bought the windbreaker because the Kadak uh, gas hob worked a lot better. Um, not that it didn't work last time; it just took a lot longer to cook. Whereas this time it cooked really, really quickly. So I was very, very happy with that. Um, the cooler, my Aldi. Adventure Ridge cooler seems to be holding up. Um, I guess I'm probably going to skip the hammock tonight just because it's got a bit later than I thought it would. Um, this is my first, obviously, sort of camp that I'm filming, so I um, everything just took, everything just took love me about four times as longer than I thought it would. Um, sort of trying to, uh, you know, as being a, a photographer for a living. Um, that I used to do video and did it for a long time and um, sort of fell out of love with it a little bit but obviously our main business is photography and obviously with the video you've got to kind of plan your shots and I've got to make sure I set the camera up and before I do something so everything just takes longer and um, you know I mean I arrived here I arrived here at this at this site at like about half five and what we're on now like ten to nine so I mean I've been here for you know, um, sort of a good three and a half hours nearly. And uh, while, I mean, I managed to get my fire going again, which I'm happy with. And I, you know, I, the thing is, the interesting thing is the actual tent box roof tent and the awning, like you saw, it took no time at all to set up. Obviously the windbreaker was a little bit more faffy, but generally speaking, I'm really happy with the setup. And, um, Obviously when we've camped in the past, you've got to set up your tent and do all of that. Everything else is pretty much the same. But, you know, I've got the tent box power station and the solar panel, obviously powering the cooler still, so that's still going. I should have enough juice in there to, to charge my phone and that later. Um, I've charged a Insta360 back battery, which is the action camera that I've been filming on. I uh, managed to get the drone up earlier which was good, um, so while I was waiting for my potatoes. But yeah, so I'm really, really happy with the setup and it's nice, like, I mean, we did a camp on Saturday night, so today is like, today is Wednesday. And um, I did a camp on Saturday night with Shazia. 
and it all went really well and Shazzy is a great cook and Shazzy does the cooking. Um, Shazzy was a very reluctant camper um, and while to say that I think probably this has been easier than, or easier or better than a previous camping experience as a child and we've never camped as adults together so this is really properly our proper first sort of uh, you know like camping experience as a couple um, but I think she was you know she woke up the other morning and said she hadn't really slept whereas I slept all the way through so I thought I'll come out tonight and obviously I can make this video um, and I'm going to be making more videos moving forward of our travels because we fell in love with a few people on YouTube who were doing basically what I've done in this video you know filming the camping and whether it's uh, whether it's for inspiration or adventure or whether it's um, just to escape and we can't always escape ourselves so sometimes it's it, it feels good to escape with somebody else even if you don't know them and obviously by having this YouTube channel if you're in a position probably like we've been in the past where you can't, can't quite get away sometimes it's nice just to sit in bed and just like just watch you know these camping videos and stuff and it does get, give you the bug of like whether it's for traveling or whether it's for camping or whether it's for buying a roof tent it's um I enjoy watching them, I enjoy watching other people which is why I wanted to make these videos um, you know and also so people could see you know I post a lot, we post a lot of images of our, our travels and of the tent box and stuff but I think it's good for other people to see exactly how we do it this has been a good trip for me so I can see how much of a faff on it is to try and camp and film at the same time <laughs> but it's um it's good, I've enjoyed it, and I hope you've enjoyed watching me do this. Um, I guess I just wanted to say, like, if you're at this point, you know, I appreciate you watching, thank you. Um, appreciate you joining me on these adventures. Um, Shazzy is a bit camera shy, so she, it's not the reason why she didn't come today, but she's got the gym in the morning, whereas I'm still on lockdown body. So, but I'm trying to get better. I've dropped about half a stone in the last, uh, few weeks but um, Shazzy's at the gym in the morning but we both got work tomorrow so I'm gonna be packing up and heading home in the morning but it's just nice to get away it's just nice to get away and you know be outside I've probably I said in my tent box cargo review video and if you've not watched that go and check it out that I felt there was something missing in my life and while I love my life and I love Shazzy and I love our jobs and our business and you know I love our house and everything I love the cats it's nice just to come out every now and again and just sit and have a bit of fresh air and do this so hey what's happening guys uh, so I've just put the festoon lights up <clears throat> which uh, are running off the tent box sort of portable power station I've got a bit of uh, power left in there so I'm just giving the lights a bit of a, a a turn the fire's kind of going still smoking so it's uh i think it's clear that i'm not the uh the fire expert on youtube as i mentioned earlier but um i've also made the decision to uh give up on the i'm not going to do the rice pudding tonight it's a bit too late um yeah it's like quarter past nine so i uh actually no Sorry, excuse me, French. I'm gonna do the rice pudding. I'm gonna do that now. So, I've got the grill to the camping gas uh, cooker ready. I need to get my little frying pan out of here. So, this is a frying pan, but I'm just gonna use it as a bowl, sort of to heat the uh, rice pudding up in. I've got my tin of ambrosia rice pudding and I think somewhere I've got a little mini jar of jam the ones that you get in hotel rooms and uh, not hotel rooms like hotel buffets and breakfast and stuff like that I've got one of them somewhere so hopefully I might be able to have a dollar for jam in there as well so let's uh There 
there we go so rice pudding is in let me scoop this out I don't know if any of you are like me but I can't leave anything in the tin it feels like I'm just wasting money if I do which is crazy but uh, that's the way it is okay so okay so I'll put that in the bin shortly uh, I need to turn my gas on So we'll turn that on a low heat, just get that mixing around. I'm just going to put some of this stuff away, I'll be back in a sec guys. Alright guys, so the rice pudding's cooking, I'm going to chuck this in the bin. Move this table out of the way. Hold on. My little chair here, so I can talk to you guys. Hopefully, I'm tall enough. Hang on, let's check this camera. Yeah, that's fine. That's fine. I'm always conscious of not being in frame. I think after being a videographer for so long, uh, you get, you know, you obviously you take this seriously, and I think good camera work's important. Making sure you can see me, so you make sure you can see the rice pudding. Uh, yeah, it's all important. Yeah, I actually thought it was later than it was. Like, um, I don't know why. I just thought it was like after 10. And that's why I was like, no rice pudding, it's too late. And then uh, when I saw it was like 10 past, quarter past nine, I was like, sorry, let's, uh, let's do the rice pudding. So what this means is that we're, I'm gonna go, I'm gonna take you down to the beach in the morning um, when I wake up. Uh, which I think will be better, it's going to be beautiful in the morning um, the sun sets the opposite direction of the beach um, but it's a really nice sort of pink sky tonight uh, tell you what, let me leave that there come with me, I'll show you the sunset um, let me just detach this from the tripod so yeah, so we're still recording so that's the sky tonight, so it's a nice pink, beautiful sunset sky and this is what you get very often when you're in Northumbria, or Northumberland, should I say, sorry. I don't know which it is, Northumbria, Northumberland, I don't know. But um, yeah, this is what you get, clear skies and it's just beautiful. So I'm hoping if it stays like this tonight, um, so there might be some stars out there. Whether we'll be able to see them with the camera or not is another thing, but I will do my utmost to show you if I'm still awake by the time the stars are out. But uh, look at that, eh? fantastic. And oh, let's see if I can spin this round and talk to you while I'm there. Yeah, so really, really nice sunset. Like I say, I've got these sort of dunes here. My other camping option was to be sort of over here in this space and actually in hindsight that probably would have been <laughs> a better visual for you but uh, as you can see there's the camp um, all set up I'll just move around so you can see it all at night but obviously there's the truck got the festoon lights got the fire pit going yeah Really, really nice. And I'm going to have to go and check on my rice pudding because the last thing I want is to burn my rice pudding. Right, guys. So, I'm back. I've just been taking a couple of photos. So, but I'll come back and check on my rice pudding. Oh, that's looking good. It's looking good. I'm going to take that off the heat, I think. Hmm. 
nice and warm. Um, I mean, hot, I'm gonna let it cool down for a minute. I need to get a heat mat as well. So I've got these nice little rubber heat mats just to put plates, like warm plates on. Obviously, I don't wanna be damaging the table or anything. So uh, I've just got one of them to put on the here. I found my little pot of hotel jam. Might have actually gone a little bit cold now, that's warm it up again. Yeah. Get on the burner again. I'll just warm that up one more time. And then uh, should be good to go. I'm loving this man. Uh, this little multi cutlery set. Um, it's been very handy. It's a little bit faffy, you know what I mean? Like in the sense of, alright, I need my knife, I've got to get that out and then put my spoon away and stuff. But instead of having like loads of cutlery, um, it's it's pretty good. The verdict on them coffee logs, I mean, Shazia was very impressed with them, but I mean, they take, but they don't really make a hot bed of coal. If you like, you know, that sort of hot coal bed that you need just to, you know, keep the fire going. Doesn't really do that, so. Um, but the reason we're not using wood, like wood logs, is because um, they kick out too many embers and they might damage the awning and I quite like the fire sort of close by. So um, it's fine enough if you're out in the open but I just don't want any embers damaging the awning. So um, we've just been using the pre, you know what I mean, like the pre-pressed logs, uh, the fuel logs. Uh, we've tried a few different ones. Um, the coffee ones sounded a good idea. They do smell of coffee, like I said earlier, but um, they just don't really make that hot coal bed that you want so that's the downside to them so I probably won't use them again once I've used them all up uh, I've had to get this fire going probably about six times tonight which is not really ideal it could be because I'm rubbish at doing fires but let's not let's let's not be convinced that's the case because um, I've never really had an issue before so we'll see um, probably just you know first time doing a YouTube video the fires don't really work out but it's there it's roaring I can feel it and uh, Yeah, there it is. It's roaring. You can see what I'm talking about. And yeah, nice and cozy. Um, so I think my rice pudding is pretty much done now, I want to say. Let's turn that heat off. Let's give this another go. Perfect. So that literally took me half an hour to make. With all the faff on and everything else, I think I definitely need to nail down this filming while I'm camping thing. Um, I definitely need to get quicker at the tasks at hand. Like it would take me five minutes to make this normally. So I need to get it down from half an hour while I'm filming. I mean, I appreciate I have to obviously do a few different shots and things like that, but still, shouldn't take me half an hour to make rice pudding. And the fact that I didn't want to have rice pudding at 10 o'clock, it's now 20 to 10. So yeah, lessons to learn for the future and things to get better at as well. So yeah, so I'm gonna enjoy my rice pudding and then um, I'm gonna bring the fire over here probably and put it a bit closer. And I might just uh, I might just have a nice chill with my copper. I've still got some copper burg left, so I might have a bit more of a chill. I've got a fly zapper as well. It's not, doesn't seem too bad at the minute, but um, they might come out, so I might just set the fly zapper up as well, just in case I need it. And uh, yeah, that should um, that should be a nice cozy night. And I'm, I've, I've got a book to read. I could just sit here and read my book. I'm probably gonna ring Shazia, and because um, I've not really spoke to her after, at all afternoon. She rang me earlier, and I was like, "Too busy, I'll call you back," and I never did. And then my dad phoned me. I was like, "Dad, I'm busy, I'll call you back." So um, yeah, I need to uh, I need to call a couple of people, but I'll answer a few emails as well. Um, but uh, yeah, I'll uh, finish my rice pudding and uh, I'll come back on shortly. So it was all going so well, 
and then I've just sliced my thumb open doing the washing up on the new multi-tool cutlery set knife that I was praising earlier so I don't know if you can see that very well but yeah I've took a a gash on my thumb so uh, I need to just I've got a first aid kit with me so I'll try and stop the bleeding and then I'll get a plaster on it hopefully that'll do the job I just need to just stop it bleeding first uh, but I came prepared in anticipation um, of something stupid like this happening so um, yeah I've got, a, I've got a first aid kit and we'll We'll get a plaster on it and it'll be all right. So I'm just gonna enjoy the rest of this Copperberg while I tend to my thumb. And then, uh, and then I'm gonna sit and probably just read my book. But yeah, really nice night. Um, just a nice bit of peace and quiet. Obviously trying to film and trying to do everything else has took a bit longer than I thought, but obviously with practice, I'll get that narrowed down. But for a first, first trip camp being filmed, I'm very happy. So yeah, so I'm probably gonna leave it now, but I think the video's not finished. I'll come back in the morning, we'll head down to the beach and uh, we'll be making breakfast tomorrow morning. So I've got bacon butties on the go tomorrow. So uh, I'll say night, but uh, like I say, I'll be back in probably about five seconds. So um, yeah, that's pretty much it, me ready for bed. Um, I've just had a chat with Shazia and then I've put the fire out, turned the festoons off. So um, I think, uh, yeah, I'm gonna get myself up, go to bed, and I'll be up bright and early in the morning and I'll take you down to the beach and um, just show you the beautiful coastline. So I'm just going to take my shoes off and stick them in the little tent box bag that's hanging outside the tent just because they're a bit filthy. There's like a strange mist coming in from the from the sea. It's not rain, but it's just it's misty. Uh, the best way I can describe it. So it's a little bit damp on the ground, so my shoes are a bit dirty. So I'm going to put them in this bag, which should keep them nice and waterproof. And then I can... Stick these back outside. Hopefully no one pinches my shoes in the middle of the night. And ah, I'll get this all. <laughs> uh, this is the inside of the tent box cargo. Um, there's not a huge amount of footage photographs of the inside of a tent box cargo I, just, I appreciate a lot of people are dying to see something so i'll give you a quick tour as best i can so this is the netting with the fairy lights in which does look quite cool and um, i've got a nice little light up there which is the one that comes with the tent box cargo uh, that's that little extra light that they give you um, and then you've got a couple of sort of pockets over in the corner um, just for storage but the main thing is it's just nice and cozy in here and um like i said it's quite misty outside but it's just it's really warm it's, it's quite warm in here and i don't have the hot water bottle in or anything like that tonight it's just nice and toasty which is fab so i'm going to get myself to sleep and uh i'll report back in the morning with hopefully a bit of nice weather and we'll head down to the beach all right guys hey guys so um it's basically about f just before 5 a.m um ever since i put the camera down um probably about five hours ago five and a half hours ago um it's just been a constant barrage of high wind um just i wouldn't say it came out of nowhere obviously it was quite misty and it was blowing quite misty when uh, i went to bed but um there was a warning for sort of yellow yellow warning for winds and it seems like it's come now 
So all night it's just been boom, boom, and the tent's been shaking and I've not really slept. Um, so I think what I'm gonna do is I can either sort of sit here and wait uh, just for um, sort of my alarm to go off in another few hours or it's a little bit light outside, I can get myself up, just pack up and head home. Um, so I think that's probably what I'm gonna do. Um, bit of a shame really, because there was some things I wanted to do tomorrow morning and I did want to go down to the beach. Uh, but I've just popped my head outside and you can't see anything, it's just completely misted over um, and quite foggy. So uh, there wouldn't really be much point in hanging around for that. I think um, if I wasn't going home anyway, then I wouldn't pack up, but uh, since I'm gonna be setting off home, in a few hours, I think I might just uh, pack down and, um, you know, still remember having just a really nice night last night, you know, a nice meal, nice chill, um, nice sunset, and, uh, yeah, hopefully a bit of better luck on the next adventure. But I appreciate you all tuning in and, uh, and watching this video, and um, I'll have more to come. So that's it from me guys, so if you made it to the end, thank you very much for watching. If you've enjoyed this video, show the love, hit subscribe, and remember to like this video. Any comments, put them below. I want to eat my Oreo minis and finish my drive home, and I'll see you on the next adventure. Thanks guys.